Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce uh, Technical Assistance Workshop. Uh, we have an exciting group of people here today from CareerSource, uh, one of the largest uh, recruitment and staffing agencies here um, in Miami-Dade County. Um, and they've been doing some amazing work. And I want to welcome you to our webinar uh, today to talk about some of the tools that they have um, for business owners. So um, if you are on Facebook, please share this. Um, this is a very important conversation for business owners about tools, grants, and resources they have uh, for you and your business now. So if you know of any business owners, so if you're on Facebook, share. Um, if you want to join the conversation as a business owner to ask any questions, feel free to do so. Um, for those that are um, attendees, I want to welcome you um, to this uh, webinar. We're going to get started in a few moments. Please share uh, this information. We're going to allow just a few moments for everyone to start to jump in and be a part of the conversation. I want to thank you for being on to our technical assistance workshop, Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. So we do these workshops um, at, at least bi-monthly uh, as Miami-Dade Chamber. So for those that are just uh, seeing this, logging on, um, you can go to our website, www.m-dcc.org. Um, to find out more about the chamber and go to our events page, see any upcoming events. Um, these technical assistance workshops are in partnership with Miami-Dade County, uh, Career Source, the Miami, um, Florida Supply Diversities MBDA Center, um, and a few others to make sure that we get this information out to our business owners. So we want to welcome you and thank you for um, being a part of this. Share, share, share. This is going to be some great resources that far too many business owners uh, many times have no clue about. And that's why we're here making sure that you are up to date with the latest information um, when it comes to how Career Source can empower your business. So for those that are joining on Facebook, please share. We're going to get started in this just one more moment. Um, you can join the conversation by clicking the link in the chat. Um, so that <laughs> in, in the Facebook post, so that you can join us, um, ask your specific questions. These are the experts here at Career Source um, that are available and open to you. Uh, and with that, we are coming in on 10.05. And um, I want to welcome everyone. Uh, to the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. But I want to begin uh, with words from our president, uh, Mr. Eric Knowles. So Mr. Knowles, you have the floor. Matthew, thank you. And uh, <clears throat> definitely want to thank um, our illustrious leader over there at Career Source, Mr. Rick Beasley, who wasn't with us this morning, but definitely want to thank Rick for everything that he does uh, for businesses and the community. Uh, Robert, thank you. Alicia, thank you. I know you'll bring a lot of great information. So I look forward to hearing um, everything that you have to provide to our community. Awesome. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Knowles. And I want to begin uh, by starting off um, and introducing uh, Alicia Thomas. Um, who is a business service coordinator for Career Source South Florida. Alicia has dedicated a 30 year career to addressing customer concerns and working to solve problems in the community as a business service coordinator. She helps companies with their most important mission, which is finding talent. Before joining Career Source South Florida, Alicia was involved in economic development for the state of Pennsylvania, resort and hospitality management, procurement and small business ownership which has provided her with an understanding of many desperate challenges facing businesses today. During her free time, Alicia enjoys exploring all the wonderful and unique neighborhoods, parks, and restaurants that Miami has to offer. I uh, wanna welcome Alicia for being here and, and joining us. Uh, we're pretty excited about the opportunities that she's going to be able to provide uh, to us 
So I'm excited, um, part of that. Next up, who we'll be presenting first is Robert Smith. And Robert Smith is the supervisor of adult programs for Career Source South Florida uh, and a member of senior management team providing strategic oversight and guidance to of all programs related to activities. As a program supervisor, he is responsible for the business services team and the daily operation of four career centers. In addition to regular career services, Mr. Smith also oversees the daily operations for partnership programs at Florida Moore University, St. Thomas University, and the three career source tech hire centers. Prior to joining Career Source South Florida, uh, Mr. Smith served as a Naval Intelligence Officer at Standing Joint Forces Headquarters at the U.S. Southern Command in Miami, Florida. He retired after serving 22 years in the Navy. Mr. Smith is originally from Richmond, Virginia, and has been in workforce services since his retirement. Uh, Mr. Smith and uh, Mr. Ms. Thomas, we are um, glad to have you here today. And we'd like to uh, have you take the floor from here and let us know about the opportunities that Career Source has for our business owners. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for uh, this chat. Hopefully we can answer your questions and provide you with some valuable information, some information that you will, uh, that will serve you well. <clears throat> A little bit about Career Source South Florida. Career Source South Florida is part of the administrative services branch of Miami-Dade County. We are the largest workforce board in the Southeast US servicing Miami-Dade and Monroe County. Under the guidance of our executive director, Mr. Rick Beasley, we oversee 12 full-time career centers. Uh, these are centers where you can receive all types of services, no matter uh, what your interests or needs are. We have 14 access points. These are typically libraries or other community type uh, facilities in which you can access career source uh, through via the internet. Uh, they don't necessarily, they aren't necessarily staffed with a career source uh, personnel, but the individuals there do have knowledge of career source and can help you gain access to career source. We have five mobile assistance units. These are uh, 40 foot RVs that are mobile career centers that we can bring out to your business or your location to assist you with your recruiting or hiring needs. We have three tech hire centers. These are centers designed to uh, increase or erode the digital divide and bring technical training to various individuals. We have two career development centers, as previously mentioned, one on the campus of St. Thomas University and one on the campus of Florida Memorial University. These are designed for our college students and assisting them and gaining their first job outside of college. And we have one reemployment center. Career Source, as a workforce board, unlike most workforce boards, we do not provide direct services. Uh, we competitively bid out our career centers, and those career centers are ran by nonprofit, uh, in some cases, for profit uh, entities, as well as our youth services providers. So, from a business standpoint, what does Career Source or what can Career Source do for me? There are four major things I like to touch on with regards to what Career Source can do for you. The first would be solutions for recruiting. The job database that Career Source uses is called Employ Florida or Employ Miami Dade here locally. That database stretches the entire state of Florida. So by using that database, you will be able to not only post your jobs and have your jobs seen here locally, but they will be able to be viewed by anyone in the state of Florida. Now, you're not limited to the state of Florida because the workforce boards are part of the American Job Center network. Anyone in any state would then be able to select and say, I wanna look at jobs in the state of Florida and it will bring up the database from Employ Florida. They then can drill down to Miami and look for jobs here locally in Miami. So you really can recruit talent from anywhere in the United States. <clears throat> With regards to candidate recruitment and screening, oftentimes the HR process is a financial, can be a little bit of a financial burden for a company, especially for our smaller businesses who don't have a dedicated HR department. 
That's where Career Source can come in and assist you. We can provide that HR arm for you. Not only will we post your jobs, but we can screen candidates for you. We can set up interviews for you. And we can do all of that first level screening that you know, most small businesses just don't have time to do. Once we get to that point, then we can set up one-on-one -on -one interviews to where you're minimizing the amount of time you're spending on the process and yet getting the candidates that you're looking for. We provide in-person, mobile and virtual career recruiting services, meaning we could come to your location. You're free to utilize any one of our 12 career centers. We have the five mobile units that we can bring to your location or to some other public location. And we also have a virtual career platform in that um, we do host virtual job fairs with up to upwards of you know, 50 or 75 employers at one time with individual breakout rooms. So just like when you walk into a normal career fair, you're in a large forum. There are you know, 50 different booths around with 50 different employers. And if someone is interested in your company, they will walk up to your booth. The same holds true for this virtual recruiting platform and that it's a large virtual room. And when someone is interested in speaking to you directly, they will click onto your booth and you could begin a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that individual. Everything is recorded. Um, therefore, you would be able to have a transcript of your conversation after the fact, along with contact information and resume information on those individuals. The next thing I like to touch on is our training programs and what we team financial assistance. One of the problems that small businesses have in growing is that bringing on new employees, the amount of time it takes to train a new employee and get them up to speed to the point where they're actually financially productive for you as a business. How Career Source South Florida assists you in that manner is that we provide a program called on the job training. In this particular program, if you were to hire someone who maybe has some of the skill sets you need, but weren't fully prepared to do the job that you need them to do, Career Source will partner with you to do an on the job training program for that individual. Depending on the size of your company, you could be reimbursed up to 75% of that employee's wages during the training period. Our business service reps will sit down with you and map out a, a training pipeline or training curriculum for that individual. Each month, you as the business owner will sign off that the individuals have attained the competencies that they're required to obtain for that month, turn that information in along with your payroll registry and career source will then reimburse you up to 75% of that employee's salary. This is a program that's been highly successful in helping small businesses grow. And it's one that I wholeheartedly encourage each and every business to take full advantage of. There are some opportunities for paid internships uh, with regards to our two universities that we mentioned, St. Thomas University and Florida Memorial University. Um, we do have a number of students who are required to have internships prior to graduation. So if you're looking for someone with a college degree, um, maybe you want someone fresh out of college that you can train up in the manner in which your business operates, certainly look at the students from either one of those universities. There are internship opportunities available with them. Now, we're not limited to just those universities. Uh, we do have uh, strong working relationships and partnerships with Miami-Dade College, uh, all of their campuses, as well as Florida International University. Uh, the only difference there is we just don't operate their career development offices on a daily basis. There are some opportunities for employee worker training grants. If you are a business that is shifting focus due to COVID or uh, some other reasons, and you need to upskill your current workforce, there are opportunities available in which Career Source can assist you with upscaling your current workforce, as well as the apprenticeship programs. Now, in the state of Florida, the apprenticeship programs are the fastest growing program for training individuals. The apprenticeship is a work as you learn type of model. The programs are free to the participants. 
and depending on the program can last anywhere from a year to four years, uh, depending on the actual work that's being done. There are several apprenticeship programs now that uh, we currently work with uh, from the automotive industry to the aviation industry to construction, uh, a number of programs. And we also have pre-apprenticeship programs in four local high schools. So if that's a talent pipeline that you're interested in, please contact us. Uh, we'd be more than happy to assist you with that. Now, um, as we all know, sometimes things happen in life and people are faced with some challenges. Because of those challenges or because of those events in life, it can be sometimes hard for individuals to then find employment if they are a returning citizen or have had some uh, run-ins with the law. That doesn't mean that they're bad people or they wouldn't make outstanding employees. In fact, I think most businesses will find that returning citizens are some of the most dedicated and hardworking employees uh, that they will encounter. But if as a business owner, you're nervous about taking that chance, Career Source can assist you there as well. There is a federal bonding program that provides a secure uh, insurance policy for businesses who are willing to hire some, a returning citizen or an individual with a, a background challenge. That bond will uh, issue, is issued directly to the business. And if there is any issues or problems, anything that violates uh, the terms of the agreement, then that bond is paid in full to the business to mitigate any uh, impact from hiring the individual. And we'd be more than happy to provide you with more information on that as well. The next thing we like to talk about is our layoff aversion programs. Our layoff aversion programs are basically programs that uh, we create to help mitigate uh, any financial impact that a business may go through when downsizing, having to relocate uh, instances such as COVID, which may affect your business, causing you to possibly have to lay off individuals and or retrain, reemploy individuals in different capacities. Through our network of integrated uh, business service team, we partner with the local chambers such as this great chamber here, uh, as well as other entities to bring together a group of individuals who uh, can assist businesses no matter what the issue may be. We're basically a team of subject matter experts that we hope the members of those team, that team will be able to answer any questions you have and assist you in any specific areas you may need assistance. Sort of a one-stop shop for all your business needs. We also have a dedicated reemployment assistance coordinator. This individual will work with any employees that are being laid off and provide them with advanced services so that we can mitigate the time of layoff in between employment. And as previously mentioned, Career Source is not only a source of retrained talent, we are a direct source of new talent. We currently operate the Career Development Offices at Florida Memorial and St. Thomas University as well as our partnerships that I previously mentioned with Miami-Dade and Florida International. So we are a source of fresh college talent. We are a source of advanced educational talent. And then if you're looking for individuals with master's and even doctorate degree levels, we also have those individuals in our job databases as well. So no matter what level of talent you are looking for, Career Source is a place that you can come to find that level of talent. Now, the one thing that I did not mention that um, I do want to mention is that the services that Career Source South Florida offer are quote unquote free to any business in Miami Dade or Monroe County. Now, I don't want you to take that word free uh, and get the wrong impression. There is a misnomer that if you pay for Indeed or you pay for Monster, that you're going to get a better service than if you go to Career Source South Florida. Well, here's a news flash for you. You paid your business taxes in 2020 and 2019, 2018. 
In doing so, you've paid for the services of Career Source South Florida. So the services are not free and that we're not going or free and that we're not going to send you a bill, but you've indirectly been billed for our services and you've already paid that bill. So why not take full advantage of it? Our services are funded through the Department of Labor for local businesses here in Miami-Dade, Monroe County. So you are getting the same level of quality service, if not better than anywhere else you would go and pay a second bill to receive. With that, I will uh, allow my colleague, Ms. Thomas, to talk a little bit about uh, layoff aversion and COVID-19, since that is a you know, point of emphasis right now. And then uh, Matt, if you are ready, we will open up the floor for questions. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Smith, for providing that information. Looking forward to uh, Ms. Thomas. I want to remind those that are joining us, uh, feel free to put your questions in the uh, Q&A box. Um, utilize the chat to say hey um, or have any comments, but put your questions in the Q&A box uh, after Ms. Thomas' presentation. Uh, we will be able to entertain questions, and this is an opportunity for you to ask specific questions for your businesses to the people that run these programs. For those that are joining us on Facebook, all you have to do is click the link to join the conversation and get into Zoom um, so that you can ask questions specific to your business. Please feel free to continue to share this with business owners um, because this is a game chamber changer. It, what Mr. Smith just talked about was a uh, layoff aversion programs uh, where they can help you if, as a business owners, if you have in that position where you're thinking about um, having to lay off employees, they can come in to assist you in that regard. If you're trying to find more employees, they can career source can assist you in that regard. And there's so many opportunities that are available. We want to make sure that you have the latest information about that. So thank you for joining us today. Share this with other business owners. And with that, Ms. Thompson, um, you have the floor. Well, thank you. Um, yes, we're here to help you. Uh, through every, you know, whatever your needs may be. Um, I was gonna speak about the uh, layoff aversion uh, grant that we've been offering. Unfortunately, I have to say that right now our website is down. So I'll, I'll preface it with that um, in order to apply. Uh, but if you will check back, uh, as once our website comes back up, you'll be able to apply. Uh, the grant is a one-time grant. Uh, up to ten thousand uh, dollars depending on the size of the business the eligibility requirements are quite simple you must have three to fifty full-time uh, w-2 employees you need to be in business for at least two years your primary location has to be in miami Dade, or monroe county and you have to have gross receipts that are less than 10 million Essentially, the, what we are doing is reimbursing you for expenses that you have incurred as a direct result of COVID. Some of these types of expenses might be for uh, additional software or computer equipment that you've had to purchase to allow employees to work from home, um, additional cleaning and sanitation supplies that you've had to purchase to keep your, your employees and your customers safe. Those types of things uh, are, are what we were um, reimbursing for. Um, again, like I said, we do, do still have funds available. As soon as our website is back up, we'll be able to apply. And uh, if you have any questions, please just reach out to me and I'll help you with that. All right, Ms. Thompson, do you have a PowerPoint um, you want to share? Um, I can. Okay. All right. You have the ability. Planning to, but. Got it. Let me get back in there. All right. So we get that up and running. I want to thank everyone for joining us. The Miami Day Chamber of Commerce partnership with Career Source uh, to put on this uh, webinar. Uh, for you and for your information. Um, and with that, go ahead, Ms. Thomas. Q&A will answer these questions right after um, 
the presentation. Okay. You said it's a, uh, up to $10,000, depending on the number of employees that you have. Your eligibility requirements, as I mentioned, three to 50 employees, two years in good standing with the state of Florida. Your primary location must be in Miami, Dade, or Monroe. And you have gross receipts uh, less than 10 million. We do uh, have an opportunity for if you're a nonprofit or community-based organization. If you are a community-based organization, however, you must meet uh, this requirement where you are you're, you have a grant relationship working with the following groups, the ex-offenders, your homeless individuals, including homeless children and youth, youth offenders, youth at risk of court involvement, and or youth involved in the juvenile justice system, individuals with disabilities, including youth with disabilities, and the migrant and seasonal farm workers. Reimbursable expenses are those that I mentioned. Um, and if you have questions about a reimbursable expense, please feel free to reach out to me. Documents that are required include um, your, we tried to make it as simple as possible. So it's just some very basic documents that you should, would, any business would have, including your tax reform, uh, tax forms, your W-9s, your RT-6s, your business lease, and then of course the receipts. That's it. I do want to add for the nonprofit organizations, if you have any question as to whether or not you are serving one of the uh, designated populations under the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act law, which is a requirement, um, prior, before just not applying, reach out to us, have a conversation with us. Let us see if we can make the connection and assist you. Awesome, thank you very much, Mr. Smith and Ms. Thompson for providing that information. Um, we currently have a um, question um, by one of our members, Ms. Gloria Fonseca. Um, Ms. Fonseca, you can uh, unmute your mic. And for those that are in the webinar, um, you can raise your hand and um, ask questions. Um, and I'll be able to see that, but you have to use the raise your hand function so that I can see um, that you are available. And when you are available, you can unmute your mic and speak. So we have Ms. Gloria Fonseca of Fonseca LLC. I um, want to introduce yourself and um, go ahead with your question, Ms. Fonseca. Good morning, Chamber. Good morning, um, Career South Florida. We are very um, thankful for this presentation. Mr. Smith, you have been very clear and uh, had opened a rainbow of opportunities for small businesses. And uh, we are really uh, thankful for that. Um, for you, I know that you kindly, kindly already uh, respond back to me because I had tried since two weeks ago and I know the system is down. Um, but uh, even though uh, I was trying before in order to get somebody in person, I approached uh, Opaloka uh, uh, office and also Miami Gardens office, but I haven't been able to talk with anybody. And I have already uh, developed uh, um, uh, uh, that was like a training program for my employees. I had sent it to OIC. That is one of your um, nonprofits. I believe is the is the OIC of South Florida. I had spoken with them. They were taking my case, but uh, again we are stuck, and I haven't been able to get the OGT. We developed the, the training curriculum and two positions, but I haven't been able to, to finalize. So I really would like to get, uh, you know, a person that followed, uh, you know, my case directly, please. Okay, um, with regards to that, you you kind of went two different directions. OIC of South Florida is a totally separate entity from Career Source South Florida, okay? They do rent space in one of our career centers. Um, however, they are 
actually as we speak in the process of moving out of our Northside Career Center and into their own facilities. Um, they are a partner organization with us, but they are not our organization. So if you were doing a uh, OJT with them, that would be their funding that would not be ours. So with regards to that aspect, you would have to speak directly with them. Now, if you were looking at doing an OJT with Career Source South Florida, um, if you could, uh, I, well, I have the, um, the name of your business. Um, I will have the center manager at the Carroll City location, which is the one in Miami Gardens. I will have her reach out to you uh, and see if she can assist you directly. But please keep in mind that whatever you may have been working on with OIC is not Career Source South Florida, and therefore I cannot assist you with that. And thank you for your clarification because that's exactly what I understood because I initiated the process with Beralio at Miami Gardens Career South Florida, but for any reason I was, you know, like I referred to them. So that was confusing. And at the end I duplicate, you know, efforts in order to get the, the service, but I really wanted to do it directly with Career South Florida because I was uh, clear about the program and, and that was exactly what I was asking for. And the other well, question, Go ahead. What it, real quick, what it sounds like in that particular situation, if you were working with a returning citizen, see one of the things we try and do in our partnership, and this is one of the great things that I love about like our partnership here um, with Matt, is that we are going to look for the best resources and the best that we can provide you. So you may come to me with something, but Matt may have some other opportunity for you that's going to provide you more return on investment or be a better investment for you. So rather than me give you a 20 or 30% solution, I may contact Matt and say, Matt, I'm working with this employer. You have a 75% solution for it. And that's what it sounds like in that particular case. If you're working with a returning citizen, OIC of South Florida, they may have had more money for you. And so therefore what Boralio would have done was put you in touch with them and said, do your OJT with them because you're gonna get more money back by doing so. So we will rectify that situation for you and figure out exactly what happened, where the ball got dropped, and we will certainly take care of that. Thank you, I do appreciate it. Um, I have another question for Ms. Uh, Thompson. I did apply through uh, Bacon Council for the layoff aversion program. I do have all the requirements. I do have the 941 and I have all the expenses and you know, the documents and because we had to buy computers, we had to buy PPE and, and other expenses uh, direct, uh, directly relate with the COVID-19. But uh, um, I, again, everything, everything was denied and never understood the reason. So I would like to know if I can reapply and somebody can give a look to my application, please. You only applied one time? Yes, ma'am. Were denied? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can reapply. Um, when you reapply, uh, if you would ca call me before you actually apply and I'll walk you through the, uh, what you need and what you need to have. And um, I'll try to reach out to Beacon Council and find out uh, what the denial was initially um, and see if we, you know, see if it will go through. If you were to, if you were denied based on just an eligibility um, issue, then it probably won't. You, you know, you had to meet the um, basic eligibility requirements first. Yeah, I do understand, but most likely um, I was advocating my behalf because um, I have, you know, uh, the quarterly report from the from the 941, and and uh, they were asking me for 2019, and uh, we were missing one quarter, but uh, from the rest, I do believe that, that we can do it. But I know that that's personal, so we can go over if I can right. get the information. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Ms. Thompson, uh, could you put your um, contact information in the chat uh, for um, Ms. Fonseca? Sure um, will. For all those that can reach out to you. Uh, we also have another question um, in the Q&A um, that asks whether or not the layoff program is available for Broward County businesses. This <laughs> Unfortunately not. This program um, is funded, it, though it's federal funds, it's actually uh, comes down to each individual workforce board. 
to put on layoff aversion strategies for their workforce area. And this is a program that um, was dreamed up here in Dade County for our businesses in Dade County. And unfortunately, it's not something that Broward County is doing. Um, they may have some other similar type programs that they're doing, but you would have to reach out to them directly to ask what type of assistance they're providing their businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Just remind everyone that's um, on Facebook, you can click the link to join the conversation and ask specific questions. Uh, we can take a limited amount of questions that comment on the um, page. So feel free to do that on the post if you're unable to click the link and join and ask questions um, during this time. Um, and for those that are on the webinar in the process, feel free to uh, raise your hand or put a question in the Q&A box and we will um, bring you on and um, so you can ask those questions. Uh, we do have a few questions um, that business owners have had um, in regards to career source and some of the presentation that you've presented. And I wanna go ahead and ask a few of those. So um, first, um, um, are there specific industries where career source um, have, I guess, a lot more people uh, specialized and ready to um, work? And if so, uh, what are those industries? Um, that people at career source may have people for? We do not target any specific industries. Um, wherever a person's interests are, from the job seeker side, we're trying to assist them in finding a position that um, you know, satisfies them, enriches them in life, because we want you to go to work every day and be happy going. Uh, from the business standpoint, whatever your industry is, we're trying to find individuals who want to work in that industry, or who are open to being trained to work in that industry. Um, so we don't uh, specifically target. Now we do put out what's called labor market information. Those are seven year projections of where local businesses and industries are growing and where the most job opportunities are going to be in the Miami-Dade County area for the next seven years. I would say that the majority of those surround the seven targeted industries uh, here. Um, which uh, if you just Google the seven targeted industries, it will give you those industries. There are numerous, numerous different jobs and job titles and vacancies under those industries. Obviously, hospitality and tourism in Miami-Dade is always going to be a big one. Surprisingly, most people don't realize, but education is also a wide open career field here in Miami uh, with so many colleges and universities. So whatever your interests are, we're trying to meet you where your interests are or what your business needs are. Well, that actually um, brings to the, the, the next question. It's based upon um, both of your experience. Um, are there any specific business type of businesses um, or industries where you've seen that um, career source has been the most impactful um, to? I, I know from personal experience, I've seen quite a few people in construction um, or doing any construction and have been able to get opportunities and get um, good people. But I just wanted to know, is there any specific business for those that may be listening that may have a business in that industry, um, which ones you think have been positioned best to take advantage of the resources career stores have? Okay, um, I'll start. Um, you are absolutely correct. The construction industry has definitely benefited uh, from career source, a lot of on the job training. Um, we've also, we have um, a number of programs and apprenticeships in the construction uh, trades. Um, we have a pre construction pre-apprenticeship program in a high school that's a feeder pipeline into that industry. So I would say overall in mass numbers, we've definitely helped all of those, but then I have to kind of take a step back and say from a small business perspective, in the IT industry, we're doing some great things. Um, Matt, as you know, we have a, a tech hire center at Opalaka that's trained a lot of people um, that has opened up some new opportunities to individuals who never thought they would have a career in the IT industry. And we also have at the YWCA, a women in technology uh, tech hire center that's focused solely on uh, women in the IT industry and providing them opportunities in the IT industry. We completed a cohort of 11 young ladies, uh, all female, all female instructors. They all went to work for female businesses. 
And I think the impact of that overall was significant. Um, there's no other workforce board in the state of Florida that has done a program such as that. And I think the opportunities that uh, we are looking to open up for individuals is what makes us different. So if you have an idea, you have a need, especially something outside the norm, that I think is where we're the most impactful for. We are willing to work with you. We are willing to challenge the law to see what we can do to accomplish, to assist you. And I think those have the most impact because um, Matt, you're probably gonna have to correct me on this, but I think it's about 65% or so of businesses here in Miami-Dade County are small businesses. And so if we wanna grow the economy and sustain the economy, we have to sustain our small businesses. We're getting ready to do that. Uh, another cohort in tech hire uh, and the women in tech um, coming up this summer now. And so if you're, if you're a tech business and are looking for uh, employees, it's a great way to connect with. Uh... I have one um, here, Matt, I don't know if you got this, but Brittany Jones uh, asked the question about a friend who's a welder, who wants to teach young students to weld and wanted to know if she need an LLC or sole proprietorship uh, for your apprenticeship program. Um, we will work with you to, it, we, there are two types of apprenticeship. There's a registered apprenticeship and then there's a non-registered apprenticeship. Uh, depending on which path you go uh, will depend on the specific rules. Uh, we typically like to work with registered apprenticeships, those that have been approved by the Florida Department of Education. We can walk you through the process, how to get um, your welding uh, program approved. And then um, in those situations, we can then assist you in uh, placing those individuals. And we would then reimburse you a portion of that salary while that apprentice is going through the program. You would handle the educational piece Career source would assist you with finding employers to place them with, and then we will reimburse the employer a portion of the wages while they're going through the apprenticeship model. So please reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to help you with your apprenticeship program. Awesome. Thank you very much. I know that's a, a, a very key component. There are a lot of businesses that uh, want to train their employees and train more people and apprenticeship programs have been going, growing dramatically as more people see that um, college isn't the only option. Um, and that many times um, these trade programs, the apprenticeship programs can provide um, sometimes better um, salaries than going to a four year um, institution, much significantly better and for less cost and less time. Uh, so thank you very much for sharing that because that is a, a powerful piece for a lot of people um, that are here. So thank you. We're starting to get some more questions um, in the chat um, I have right now. Uh, and for those that want to ask a question online live, feel free to use the raise your hand function and we'll be able to um, open you up to ask um, questions. So um, before I start, I believe I see something from our um, president. Uh, Mr. Knowles? Yeah, Matt, I was just uh, looking at the Facebook questions and I see that uh, Mr. Brown was asking about uh, 501c3 letters of determination from the IRS. I don't know if anyone wants to address that. Yes, sir. Um, with regards to that letter, that does, uh, that does state that you are a legal 501c3 entity. However, one thing to understand when it comes to workforce dollars, is that all workforce dollars have certain rules to them depending on the funding stream. So depending on the funding stream, there's certain requirements in order for me to use those dollars to assist you. And in this particular case, the state of Florida gave us what's called an NFA or, or funding agreement to do layoff aversion. Those funds came out of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, which is why, what we call YOA funding. As a rule of that funding, you have to service one of the targeted populations. And those were the populations that uh, Ms. Thompson mentioned. Uh, as a 501c3, obviously you're a nonprofit, you're servicing someone or somebody, um, you have a charge or a mission. 
I would encourage you to reach out to us, share that with us, and then we will be able to tell whether or not you fall into one of those categories. And then your expenses will be reimbursable. Thank you, thank you. All right, um, we have a question from um, Melissa Moore, one of our uh, members at the chamber who has a business called Solar Savior, um, which works in bringing solar energy to commercial and residential uh, businesses um, throughout South Florida. Um, and um, she's expressed interest um, in the path for our technical assistance of um, providing um, a training for uh, businesses and going through that certification process. So uh, her question um, was, what is the initial process to get started in seeing how career stores can assist small business owners in tapping into local talent available for retraining and retooling? I would say just reach out to us uh, right off the bat. Um, as far as finding talent, you know, obviously we're here to do that for you. Um, training talent. And the, the challenge with solar is it is still somewhat new, even though we have all this sunshine in the state of Florida. Um, there are not too many training programs in the state of Florida that train people in solar and teach them how to install solar and or um, repair solar. We've had to go so far north as I believe it's Jacksonville and working with one company, I can't say names, um, but uh, this particular company is in, I'll give you a hint, is in both the automotive side and also the home side. And they have a unique product and that your entire roof is basically a solar panel uh, that generates uh, electricity, not only for your home, but that you could sell back to the grid. So we are very much interested in assisting individuals in getting trained in that career field. If you are in fact, not only a small business, but a training provider, um, we'd love to talk to you. We'd love to assist you in getting your program approved with the State Department of Education. So then we can then uh, finance individuals who wanna get trained in that program, send them to you as a training provider and have you train these individuals. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. I've, I've asked to see if they can um, ask the question um, live. Um, but for right now, um, we have a Sheena who, if you are able, you can unmute your mic to ask your question. I'm going to try and um, see if we're clear about where we are now. But the question is, I have an allied health training school. Would the program also help for the apprentice to complete classwork? to become certified? What you're asking. Yeah, that's why I asked if they can uh, unmute their mic to, to ask it live. I was a little like, clear about the specific questions. So um, as Sterling James, if you are still on, um, you can unmute your mic and ask the question um, so we're, we're clear um, about it. Um, but uh, Mrs. Smith, if you understand it, feel free to um, Take a, take, take a shot at it. I'm, I'm going to throw a, a hook out in the water and see if I catch something. Um, if I'm understanding it, um, you have individuals in the allied health who are going to need, I guess, practicum experience or clinical experience. And you want to do that as an apprenticeship model. Um, I would have to see this specific program. I do know that there is one new training um, entity that's working with the University of South Florida that is doing a, an apprenticeship model with nurses and assisting them getting their uh, practicum experience. So, you know, the, the window of possibility is there. Um, we would have to look at the specific program. And then um, we are very well connected with the Department of Education and State. Um, and we can definitely ask the question. The, you know, the worst thing is they're going to say is, no, it doesn't quite fit the bill, in which case I would say, okay, well, how do we make this round peg fit in this square hole? All right. So uh, another question, while um, hopefully some others come on and um, can you unmute your mic, I have a question in Facebook. Let me see if they're able to join in. Right. Another one of those questions that's a little difficult to um, understand um, off the face value. So um, 
I have one, Matt, from Mr. Brown. I think he yeah, finally clarified. Are you understanding it? I think I don't. That's why I asked him to join in. So go, on, go okay. ahead. I asked him to join so you can ask now, him live. Mr. Brown, keep, keep typing as I answer this. So let me make sure I do get your question answered correctly. If I'm understanding you, um, you were saying that your question was pertaining to access reporting and funding sustainable either for profit or nonprofit. Is there financial floor or ceiling an amount of eligibility? Okay, so now I'm gonna attack this from two angles. First, from our specific program, um, the layoff aversion program, uh, that the ceilings there would be if you had over $10 million in gross receipts over the past two years. By that definition, you are not considered a small business. This or program over, was- Or over 50 employees. Correct, or over 50 employees. This program was approved by the Department of Labor to assist small businesses. And again, because I mentioned the crux of Miami-Dade County in order to sustain the county would be to assist the small businesses. Not that we've forgotten about our large businesses or we don't um, have love for them, but this particular program was for that. Um, there are other ways that we will look to help larger businesses. So that I think will be the ceiling. As far as the amount of funds available um, in this program, initially, I think we put about three, there was about three to three and a half million dollars for both counties uh, of available funding for reimbursement. I can tell you that the entities we're working with that are screening applicants and approving applicants, none of them have reached their cap uh, as far as funding goes. We have some entities that still have, you know, three or $400,000 to give away. So there is still funding available. Uh, the funding, the time frame goes all the way back to the governor's declaration of state of emergency, March 9th of 2020. 2020. So any expenses you've had COVID related um, with regards to PPE or, or um, you know, other things you've had to shift in order to continue to do business, um, reach out uh, to the chambers, ask your questions. They'll go through the expenses you have. They will let you know what's allowable, what's not allowable. Keep it in mind, everyone, please, the capitalization projects are not allowable by federal law. So any project you've done to your business that increases the value of your business, expanding doorways, to allow for social distancing, not COVID, that's capitalization. Um, however, we've had one business uh, who uh, took over the sidewalk and, and, and parking area right in front of their business and put a temporary outdoor dining uh, facility in front of their business, okay? Department of Labor loved it, thought it was great fully reimburse them the cost of doing that setup. Now, if you do that setup as a permanent structure, that's considered capitalization. Clearly what they did was a temporary structure in the parking spaces in front of their business. They receive authorization from the city of Miami Beach to do so. They were granted temporary authorization to put that out there It's a temporary structure. It was fully refundable. So ideas like that, we can assist you with. That's a cost that you normally would not have and normal business operations. So that is that will be a great as as opportunity. And I hope all those listening uh, share that information, share this webinar, um, and let business owners know, especially in the restaurants um, industry, um, that if they have to make some major modifications to keep their uh, traffic and their clientele that are temporary specifically for COVID, it can be almost fully refundable. And they have hundreds of thousands of dollars available right now. So it right. is very important that you apply, reach out to the Miami-Dade Chamber if you need assistance, reach out to Career Source um, as the primary point. Uh, we can help you get the back end and infrastructure together um, to assist, um, go to Career Source and be ready. But it is important that you reach out directly to the source for these opportunities so that you get very clear about the eligibility and where they are uh, with these programs. So 
Um, there's some really good questions, amazing information. Uh, thank you, Mr. Smith, uh, for providing. I, I think, uh, uh, Mr. Brown, I keep trying to get to come on to the, the webinar. Yeah, I have, <laughs> I have, I have another, another one. You got yeah. it, Mr. Smith. You got it. Okay, and I, I think now I'm better understanding where he's at. Okay, so by definition, a small business for career source, a small business is three to 50 employees. These are your um, employees that you're paying payroll taxes on. Okay, another issue with, uh, uh, with federal funds is if you're not paying into the system, you can't really get out of the system. So 1099 employees do not count. These are people that you're paying payroll taxes on, three to 50 employees. Um, anything less than three employees, we're working on another uh, program that we're trying to get approved by the Department of Labor for independent uh, contractors, also for mom and pop who may only have one or two employees and you as the business owner is also the employee. Um, we are working on trying to get that approved. Um, in terms for your grants, three year, one time or is a business already participant, are they eligible? Okay, in terms of this grant, you just have to have been in business for at least two years prior to the date of application registered in SunBiz and up to date and current on your federal taxes uh, for this particular grant. I think that answers your question. Okay. And that's a very, very important point. Um, as a chamber, uh, we provide free one-on-one -on -one technical assistance um, to business to help them getting their infrastructure together, um, getting the basics of their finances together. Um, and one of the most important um, critical things that we see a lot of business owners um, who want, who need these opportunities, need these grants, need this capital. Um, one of the biggest issues is making sure that the basics are together. They're registered on SunBiz. They have the um, local business tax receipt. They have the taxes um, are in, in order. And a lot of business owners try to um, not show too much of a profit on their taxes. Um, and many times that can work as a double-edged sword um, for you. So uh, those are a few uh, good questions. Ah, we have Mr. Brown there to come on. So uh, I'm going to allow you to talk in this way. I think this will be one of our last uh, questions. We are getting close to the time frame, um, but I want to welcome, thank everyone that's on Facebook that have been sharing and commenting <laughs> to make sure that this is available for them. So uh, Mr. Brown, uh, we're going to give you a few moments to uh, be specific about uh, what you need. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good morning. Can I hear everyone? Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. All right, well, I just, my daughter actually, Paris, works for the Chamber of Commerce, and I just happened to see the webinar. I um, have been in business for myself for about 20 years, and I um, my business is called the Nonprofit Experts, and I structure nonprofits for professional athletes and novice, anyone that wants to do some human service work. And so, therefore, I'm completely understandable on how the federal allocations work, but I'm more so concerned when I speak, in particularly when I do public presentations around access to resources for communities and for people that are in, that are in need, there's some basic requirements that I share with them initially so they, they, aren't, they don't put pressure on people like yourself. A lot of people need financial resources, but a lot of people that present themselves with the, free, with, with the resources that they can have, get, they can give to a person or allow them to have access to. We don't really normally start out, um, um, which would have eliminated a whole lot of questions, I think. If I have $100 million that's coming into the federal, from the federal government that's coming into the Chamber of Commerce, and I want to do the workforce development or any other kind of um, situation, there's eligibility requirements. Yes, there's um, program specifications associated with certain things. However, a lot of people get lost. Um, Everyone that I've set up a nonprofit for, they're under this inclination, you know, that um, because they filed their articles of incorporation, they're completely designated as a nonprofit 501c3, and they declared themselves eligible, eligible to even apply for the access. I, I didn't see all that, and I didn't hear all that. Um, how much money? What's the application date in the, um, uh, for, for applying? Um, um, is it a grant for a small business? Is it a loan? for a small business? What are the actual reporting requirements or their quarterly report? 
like we've lost. Mr. We lost Brown. you. Yeah. Um, so with that, um, we can answer the question. Yeah, let um, me let me start um, because I think there's some misconception as to what this grant is, and as far as what Mr. Brown is talking about, um, because the the numbers he's mentioned and the scale he's talking about is a little different than what we're doing here. Um, we basically had a small pot of, of money, a few million dollars that we were trying to put back into the community to offset some of the costs uh, associated with COVID-19 and continue allowing the business to continue to do business during that time frame. Um, these are grants. They're not loans. They don't have to be paid back. Um, in the application process, uh, the requirements of which you will find on any one of our chamber partner pages. If you just look on their page, um, it's gonna tell you specifically what the requirements are. And in a nutshell, we've covered those. You're just a small business between three to 50 employees, um, less than 10 million in gross receipts. You have, you're registered in SunBiz. You're gonna submit an application um, with two years worth of taxes, a uh, up-to-date, 941, um, no older than the previous three quarters, a sign and up-to-date W9, and you're gonna submit the receipts and proof of purchase for those items that you've purchased that you say are COVID related that allows you to stay in business or avoid a layoff. Um, our chamber partners will look at those. They're gonna go over them. They're gonna validate those expenses and they're gonna recommend it for payment, at which time um, it goes through a second validation uh, process, which are the Department of Labor uh, financial export experts that ensure that they meet the letter of the law and that they aren't in fact capitalization. And then um, we would mail out a check to your business for those expenses. If there's any adjustment between what you submitted and what you actually receive payment for, um, that's detailed in your response to say, we're reimbursing you for these expenses or for what you submitted minus this because it's not an allowable expense. Right, right. So, you answered, so you answered my question. So, yeah. so, the, so, the, so the resources, so the resources um, have to be paid back. It sounds like, well, you said a grant. No, 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 um, you're gonna, cause you're gonna buy it first. So you went out and you bought $5,000 worth of, of masks uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I, I, asked, I, asked, I asked the question in the, uh, the wrong way. My question thank, was, thank one, is, is it a matching grant? Is it a matching grant? And then two, is it a deferment? Is it a, um, a quarterly disbursement type of grant? Because it sounds like the person is either a matching grant or it's not a matching grant, but the person has yeah. to have some financial resources because you just suggested that you have to submit receipts and then these people are going to be get reimbursed for those receipts. But if you're a novice, what if you're a novice, a nonprofit organization that has some interest in wanting to put people to work, but you do not have the additional capital to infuse it into the social programmatic component of your business, do you guys provide that kind of assistance? Because I, I know a host of my clients, when they first start out, they pay their 850 user fee, they pay their incorporation document component. Naturally, they pay me, but I'm just saying, but there's, uh, but they don't have the financial resources to go out and do all these things. However, I help them write the grants and get all these things done. So my question basically is, um, what if you are a novice and you don't have the financial resources to outlay on capital expenditures? Uh, I guess you're not eligible. Well, a, okay, a, well, it doesn't cover capital expenditures. Yeah, because you, you're basically talking about, we're, we're talking about two different things. This particular grant is just a reimbursement for expenses that you've already incurred. OK, um, and these are actually this is not labor. This is not salary. These are, are actual products or materials that you've purchased, um, whether a business or a nonprofit, in order to cont continue to do business. You submit those receipts. We reimburse you. It's a one time thing. It's not a quarterly thing. Um, it, it's not a reoccurring thing. Once you've applied, you've been approved and you've received disbursement, you cannot apply a second time. So that's on that side. Now, on the uh, other side, for a new business or a new nonprofit that's starting up and they need uh, actual help or assistance with manpower and paying salaries, okay, 
No, we don't do that. Now we can assist you in finding talent. If there is a training component to the new individual that you're hiring on in order to get them up to speed to where they need to be to be a productive employee, again, we can reimburse a portion of their salary, but we will not and cannot by law pay their salary up front and give you free labor or give the nonprofit free labor to help them get going. I understand that it would be a great thing, but it's just not something that per the, the Wyoa law we're allowed to do and we cannot do that. Thank you, Mr. Smith. And thank you, Mr. Brown, um, for those comments and questions. That those are specific questions a lot of business owners um, have. And I want to thank all those that have um, spoken um, and asked these questions and take full advantage of the opportunities. So uh, with that, uh, Mr. Smith, um, Ms. Thomas, do you have any uh, last words um, before we close out and talk about um, the opportunities that we have as a chamber? Because one of the things that Mr. Brown touched on was what do business owners do um, when there isn't, uh, when this specific program or, or resource that career source have for opportunities, they, they can't upfront the cost. Um, there are other resources that are available. And that's what's so amazing about being part of a chamber because we can direct you to those opportunities that you can take advantage of before you go to Career Source. And Career Source is gonna only talk about their programs, uh, but there are other entities that have programs too that are available. So in a moment, I will show, show, you, show you how you can take advantage of all the programs that are out there by reaching out to the Miami-Dade Chamber. So with that, uh, Mr. Smith and Ms. Thompson, um, do you have any last words before we go? Ms. Thompson, you can go first. I would just say, if you have any, any issues related to uh, how we can help, just reach out to us. Uh, we're here to assist um, in any way we can. So please just feel free to reach out to us and, and let us help uh, with one of our programs or create a program just for you, so. Awesome, thank you, Ms. Thompson. I would like to, in closing, um, actually take my closing time and answer um, Anthony from Facebook because I, I want to try and get as many answers out to people as I possibly can. And Anthony, with regards to the PPP and the EIDL that you say you have not been able to access, that's one of the reasons why we're doing this um, Zoom today. That's one of the reasons why we have this partnership and why um, folks like Matt are a part of our integrated business service team because that's not a career source program or something that I can help you with. But I've got a good friend at the chamber and Matt who can assist you with that. That's why we're coming together. Reach out to your chamber. They have uh, webinars all the time on the PPE, um, short-term compensation, other programs, how to fill out the application. But most importantly, what they're doing is that you can schedule an, an, an appointment and sit with them and they will help you with your backroom operation. The money is out there federally. And I can tell you from a workforce board standpoint, a lot of people are not getting approved and are not getting access to this capital because their backroom operations are just not where the government feels like they should be. And we are pushing back because mom and pops don't have full-fledged you know, administrative entities. They can do a lot of this form the way larger corporations do. They do it themselves. They do it at home on their computer and Quicken or whatever the case may be. So reach out to the chamber because they will help you get that together and help you with your documentation so that you can get approved for PPE or one of the uh, other short-term programs. And thank you very much, Mr. Smith, uh, Ms. Thompson for being here um, as Career Source uh, under leadership of Rick Beasley, who's been an amazing a partner with the chamber and so many of the uh, organizations throughout um, Miami-Dade County providing a lot of these programs. Um, Career Source has been an amazing partner uh, with the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. I want to thank you so much for joining us for this uh, webinar. I do want to take a moment before we head out to share and talk about the Miami-Dade Chamber. As uh, mentioned, uh, we can help prepare you to take advantage of this these resources that uh, Mr. Smith um, talked about and Ms. Thompson talked about from Career Source and other opportunities that are available to you. 
So you can always go to our website, www.m-gcc.org um, and learn more about us as a chamber. If you want to request one-on-one -on -one technical assistance, just go to services, our technical assistance page, and you will see the areas in which we um, help out in. There are more than that, but it's strongly, all you have to do is go down and literally click the link um, to schedule a time for you right then and there. And it's a very quick and simple process for you to get a business assessment, get these questions that we can filter uh, and direct you to the right people in um, at these various organizations from Career Source um, to Miami Dade County. This is a partnership with the county. The government is literally putting these funds out there for us to provide technical assistance for you. And Miami Dade County is one of our partners that fund webinars like this so that we can get businesses infrastructure and back in to the point to where my, they can take advantage of government resources through Career Source, through Miami Dade County, and many of our entities and partners um, that we have, including the Florida State Minority Supplier Development Council um, and the MBDA Center that also um, fund this program. Also, like to welcome you to uh, join in on many of our events. Um, we just had one called Sharing Knowledge Between Generations. Um, we had some local uh, Black women millionaires talk about their experience and how they made their first million and sharing their money mistakes and successes. And that's an event that's going on throughout the year. Um, and you can always go to our um, webinar reporting page to learn more about that. Um, we have our annual Business Leaders Luncheon coming up April 30th. Um, this is an opportunity for business owners. You can sponsor, you can participate, um, but this is where a lot of our business leaders come in. We recognize um, some of the top nonprofits, um, small and large businesses, corporate partners, and rising stars in the community at our annual business leaders luncheon. And every day, I think this is probably one of the most powerful things that we do and have done as a chamber is our small business meetup where every Tuesday and Friday at four o'clock, we have a round table of business owners that come together, share ideas. And this is where a lot of our business owners and members um, were the first ones to get PPP, EIDL, the layoff aversion grant, because week to week, new regulations come out, new resources come out. And at this um, small business meetup, not only do we as a chamber, share those latest information that we have. And we're like a concentration of these resources from these various departments, I mean, uh, organizations. We share that, but our business owners share their business industry um, resources and insights. And then also even tell how they access that funding. So it's a, been a, a very powerful um, experience uh, for many of us as business owners. They got literally thousands of dollars in grant funding, uh, from a St. Thomas grant, from Facebook ads, Google grants, because they were a part of this um, small business meetup that happened every Tuesday and Friday. So please click that link um, to register. It's a very simple um, process. And you don't have to be a member to join in, but we strongly encourage you to become a member of the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, because that also unlocks so many other resources um, that are available to you. So just going in, to our page to learn more about the Miami-Dade Chamber, what we can do, um, check out our webinar recordings, but we are here for you as a chamber and we want you uh, to be a part of all the resources that are available to you. So I wanna thank everyone that joined us um, today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us as a chamber to Career Source, um, to any of our partners, because there are a lot of resources that are available to you all you have to do is reach out. And please, for those that are watching, share this information with others um, because many times, majority of this information goes um, unrecognized. Funds are out there because people simply do not know. And we're gonna do everything we can to put the word out, but we need our community and everyone watching this to spread the word so that people can take advantage of these resources. So I wanna thank you for joining us on Miami Dade Chamber of Commerce. Career Source, Miami Dade County, and the uh, uh, Florida Supplier um, Minority Developer uh, MBDA Center for joining us for this webinar. Thank you very much, and you have a great day. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Awesome.